your sister. Do, do, you, do you want to sit in the chair? No. Okay. All right. We will move the chair, and I will lift that up a little bit for you. Can you hear me? Yes. Bear with me. I don't do this very, very well. I was born and raised in West Virginia, the oldest daughter from a family of 12. I met my husband, Jack, in 1955, who was later called to be a pastor. I was raised in a strict Pentecostal church in West Virginia, and I had drifted away from God for a short period of time. As children, we often gather wrong information about the Bible, and this was from sixth chapter of Hebrews and four through six verses, which is about where the Jews had accepted Jesus as Lord, and then they had went back, and they were told that if they had once tasted that blessing that and went away from it, it was impossible. And I thought because I had backslid that I wasn't going to be able to come back to God. God would not take me back. I was under conviction all the time and I lived in fear. In my desperation, I found myself at an all fashion altar and I said, even if you never save me, I'll die serving you. I've kept that vow and still am serving you. I would like to share a few things that God has done for me over the years. We had gone to a family funeral. Afterwards, we had went out to eat with Jack's brother's wife and the kids. The doctor of the restaurant offered drinks. They had one that looked like a yummy dessert, like a chocolate one. We ordered one without thinking as we were drinking, as we were drinking those and visiting, her, his brother's children made this comment. Look at that. You guys are supposed to be Christians and you're drinking. We're not Christians and we're having Coke. Well, God convicted my heart so strongly that I promised him I would never drink again. Just hold on to that thought for a few minutes. I'm coming back to it. But I do want to say I didn't drink that much, maybe for dinner sometime. But I didn't make myself sound like an alcoholic. <laughs> Having said all of that, there are a couple miracles that we can never forget. We lived in the country and used what they called bottle gas. We cooked with it. We had been using one of these tanks for a long time and it had, was em registering empty. Now we usually, a tank would last for a month. Uh, let me go back here. It, it continued to work. It, it was registered empty, the little gauge said empty. And it kept working. And it was, over here. J it, it kept working, with, and Jack said, we need to go get a new tank. And he wasn't a Christian at this time, so I told him not to because I felt like God was going to do something special. It had worked another three months. And we had decided to move. We took the tank over to Mother and told her not to get a new tank or it would quit working. Mother used about a tank and a half a month because she still had kids at home. Mother told, mother told us, to, let's see, wait a minute. Mother told Daddy to go, I think she used it for about six weeks. And she told Daddy that he needed to go get a tank of gas or that was gonna go out. After I told her, don't go buy a new one. So he did, it went out. So we learned a lot of, about trust with that experience. Now I get pregnant frosly easy. That was when I was young. <laughs> I, 
I did want you to think I'd sell. <laughs> I got pregnant fairly easy, but my body could not sustain the pregnancy very well. I had had three miscarriages after the babies had started to move. So when I got pregnant with Linda, our daughter, I was naturally concerned. I was about five months pregnant when because of how I felt when the other babies died, I realized Linda had died as well. My stomach had back to the pre-pregnancy size and they couldn't find a heartbeat. So they planned to abort just like the other times. The day before the procedure, both our church and Jack's Bible School group had a 24 hour prayer vigil for God to restore our baby's life. When we were preparing for me for surgery, they did a last check for a heartbeat and found one. The doctor said, if you tell anyone, I will say I never told you that, meaning that he had told me the baby was dead. Almost overnight, my stomach returned to its previous pregnancy size. I cannot tell you the overwhelming joy and thankfulness that we experienced, but it wasn't over yet. Nearly 11 months into the pregnancy and she still hadn't been born. They just couldn't get me to go into labor. The doctor decided he had to make this happen. So I came up to Galleon for, my doctor wasn't going to do anything. He says, go home and stay another week. And I was hysterical, needless to say, after all that time. Um, Dr. Banthe, he broke my water and prepared to deliver the baby. We found that the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck three times, and after she was born, she was black all over, had water on the brain, and the doctor said in another day, she would have drowned, and they would have lost me too. The doctor got it unwrapped, and with the help of God, she turned out to be fine. But sometimes God likes to joke a little bit. I carried her two more months after she came back to life, and I guess it still had to be nine months, so I carried her 11 months. <laughs> At another time, we had headed home from Florida in heavy eight-mile eight lane rush hour traffic with the medium in the middle. We had prayed before we left, but I felt impressed to pray again. So we joined hands and prayed for God's care and protection over us as we traveled. Shortly after that, a tire flew off of the back of a truck in front of us, hit our windshield and our front tire, and we ended up with a blowout. Jack was trying to keep the car in control, but that wasn't going very well. The next thing we knew, we were off the road, clear on the other side, of that freeway, all of that traffic, over seven lanes of traffic. The next thing we knew, we were off the road clear on the other side of the freeway, sitting close to a concrete embankment. Neither of us knew how we had gotten there, only that one more God's hand had been upon us, and I think an angel picked us up and set us over there. The only thing that could have happened. As in life, sorrow comes, and I experienced a sorrow that I wasn't sure I could survive. Over the period of two and a half years, I lost my entire family, my husband, all my three children, along with a sister. We had been married for 57 years when Jack died, and I just didn't know how I would go on. God looked into the future and knew those days were coming he orchestrated the situation that resulted in the, vow, in the vow that I made that I would never drink again. Going back to that vow I made. If I had not made it, the temptation to find a way to escape would have been overwhelming. What amazing God he is. He orchestrated that because he knew how hard that that would be losing your whole family. 
I've been serving God for nearly 70 years. Psalms 27, 13 says, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I have. After all the loss, God gifted me with one least blessing. I met and married a wonderful man who was also a pastor. Couldn't get away from them pastors. <laughs> I'm hunting for another one, though. <laughs> And although I lost him as well, I know his faithfulness will never fail. He tells us his mercies are new every morning, and I will continue to keep my vow. vow. I will serve him for all the days that he sees fit to let me live. And he calls me daughter. When he's talking to me, he calls me daughter. And that's sweet. <laughs> 